You can hear me okay. Good to see your faces. Uh, hope everyone is staying healthy and happy and doing what they can. Uh, I got three youngsters at home, a nine-year-old, seven-year-old, four-year-old, so I've been busy trying to do the homeschooling thing and uh, and still run this program and keep in touch with the kids. But I appreciate you taking time. Obviously, the uh, it's cool when there's some good news, and certainly the, the recruiting class that uh, has come out is some pretty good news for us. So 24 months ago, we got here as a staff. Um, you know, our number one thing was to try to get to the point where this program we felt was relevant uh, nationally. Uh, I told you guys the first time I met most of you that I thought IU had a, had a rightful place uh, amongst the best programs in the country. The state was too good, the area was too good, the school was too good not to be, uh, and that our plan was to work like crazy uh, to, to make that happen. Uh, this is certainly a step in the right direction. Um, you know, recruiting for us starts really young. So you guys, I think, uh, uh, across the sports, were a lot like softball. A um, little bit different than football and basketball at times where you see seniors taking visits and making decisions. We, we have young, young people making decisions uh, fairly regularly. So uh, when we got here, this class is kind of our first full class. It takes a couple years to get your feet underneath you. Uh, and we've had some wonderful players commit to us and play. Uh, we've got some really good talent on the team now, but certainly with a class of eight that's ranked this high uh, with some pretty impressive kids, um, we're very excited about. Great, great kids. Um, really, really talented physically. Uh, cumulative uh, 3.9 GPA uh, as a group, which is also astounding when you think about it. They're, uh, they're bright. They're, they're tough. They're fun. Um, and so, yeah, so all credit to my staff did an amazing job. Uh, I've said this before too. IU, uh, since I took the job, everything they told me they would do, they did. And, uh, that's a testament to Fred, uh, and now moving on to Scott, our support staff, everyone around the program. I think recruiting is really an all hands on deck deal. Uh, and our ecosystem is pretty amazing. So, um, I'm fortunate. We're really grateful. Uh, I'm excited to get this group on campus whenever that happens. And, um, you know, for the program to have the highest ranked class in the history of the program uh, a couple years in um, is certainly a, a good sign for us going forward. So um, a lot of you guys know, um, you know how hard I, I, I always talk about the Big Ten being a monster. It is. There are schools in the Big Ten who have done this for 30 or 40 years in a row. Uh, so we've got a lot of catching up to do, uh, but you got to start somewhere. So pretty excited about where we're starting and, and where we're at. Thank you, Steve. And as a, as a note to everybody, uh, we'll be recording this, so I'll make the recording uh, available uh, to everybody uh, after the call. Uh, let's start with um, Mike Schumann, if you want to come on, Mike, and ask Steve a question. Yeah, Coach. Good morning. I, I wanted to ask, you mentioned Scott Dolson. I, I wanted to just ask about your relationship there and kind of what some of the early conversations have been in terms of kind of the vision for the program. Sure. So Scott, you know, um, when I initially was hired, uh, I spent a good amount of time with Scott early. Um, he's just a really likable guy. He's very easy to talk to. Um, I've tried to communicate with him over the course of my tenure here. Um, you know, I'm an outside of the box thinker. I'm kind of a 30,000 foot view guy that uh, likes to think about a lot of different things, not just the volleyball program, but the business of college sports and um, certainly the marketing component of it, a lot of different pieces. So uh, we've had a really good relationship. Um, I don't know many people who don't have a great relationship with him. He's just a really uh, amazing guy. Um, and he knows, I mean, that's the other thing that I feel lucky. Uh, he knows how important this sport is to the conference. We think it's the premier women's sport in the Big Ten. Um, obviously, the teams have proven uh, to have a ton of success, and he understands how hard the the landscape is and how difficult what we're doing is. Uh, so he's very open, very supportive, uh, very straightforward. Uh, and he's a guy I really enjoy. Thanks, Mike. Let's go to uh, Matt Weaver next. Matt. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Hey, Matt. What's up? Not much. You talked about uh, how, how strong the Big Ten is in women's volleyball, and some of these teams have been doing it for decades. I know covering football, they, they on the recruiting trail, they sell playing in the Big Ten East and playing against those top programs. Is that part of your guys' recruiting pitch, too? Come here, you can play against the best programs in the country day, night in and night out? 
Yeah, I think it matters. I think it speaks to uh, the kind of competitor that we want to recruit. And it's a great question. I think one of the things that separates the, the players who have real success in the Big Ten, I, I think there's a different kind of player. I'll give you an example. I think a lot of kids want to play in the Big Ten uh, to say they play in the Big Ten or to wear the jersey and say they're part of it. I think it's a different kind of kid who wants to come here and kick someone's ass. And so that's – I just think that the, the opportunity – exist to play against the best but to want to be the very best you have to you have to act accordingly you got to put in the time you got to grind and work and um so with this group specifically that we're bringing in i think they're excited about it obviously it's a pretty brave decision for them to to join our program considering the history of our program and the options they had i mean these kids all had big high level uh, options to go to really really good programs that are top 10 top 15 schools um, so, but I think they're wired differently. I think they want to have competitive success. I think they want to not only play in the conference, but, but win in the conference. Um, and that's something our staff, we talk about all the time. I mean, I was part of the Penn State program for a while and won championships. I haven't changed my mentality. I just need to find people who are wired the same way. Thanks, Matt. Let's go to Kevin Brockway. Hi, Coach. Um, the... Um, the composition of the recruiting class, a lot of people from, uh, you know, the West, California, Nevada, uh, just talk about that national recruiting and the effort that kind of went into uh, putting together a class of, uh, you know, uh, recruits from all over the country. Yeah, I think there's two phases to that, and it's a good eye. I mean, we, we certainly traveled a lot in the first couple of years and tried to identify uh, athletes that'd be willing to, to look at playing in the Big Ten and specifically at IU. I think we found the right fit for me. Uh, and the right fit for these kids. I also think it speaks to um, when we got here, uh, you know, one of the first things I did was got up into the Indianapolis area to a bunch of the top clubs. Um, you know, I'd go to practices and there weren't a lot of IU shirts or IU sweatshirts or kids that had uh, a ton of interest in IU. I think fast forward, um, you know, recently when we were up there pre-pandemic, you know, there's a good number of kids now who are excited about it. Young kids in the state are excited about it. So, um, much like many of our coaches at IU, we'd like to win the state. We want to recruit the best players in Indiana and go inside out. Uh, but this class in general is from all different parts of it. And uh, when you've got Texas and, you know, Vegas and, um, you know, California, Ohio, South Carolina, it's uh, we, we tried to find the right kind of kids for what we were trying to do. And we were lucky to do that. I think we've had uh, a lot of success nationally now. Um, explaining to people we feel we're going to be a, a program that's going to have real success and recruit real kids. Um, and that's, and that's where we've arrived. So now if, a, if, a, you know, two years ago when I got here, if you would have had one of the top kids in the country commit to IU, it would have been eye opening. but now we're in the mix with really good kids. And if a kid does come to IU, it's more, okay, it makes sense now um, because of what we're, we're kind of able to position ourselves and become a brand. Thanks, Kevin. Um, Ari Schifron. Ari, if you want to come on. Oh, sorry, I'm here. Um, how much of this success do you attribute to the new stadium? I mean, could you think you could have done gotten these kids if you were still in university gym, given your passion? Or do you? how much do you think this has helped having the new facility that's so nice to get these top kids? Well, I'd like to think if we were playing in a barn, I could recruit. I mean, but that's what you better believe if you're doing what I'm doing. The, the, the other side of it, though, is it matters a ton because it means it's relevant. I mean, that's the number one thing, not only the, the facility and, and how fortunate we are to be in it, but the location of it. I mean, everyone on the call knows how big a deal IU basketball is. We're right beside it. Uh, we're on campus. It's easy for the kids to show up and be part of um, the, the student section. Obviously, the students, I care about a ton. I want them to have a great experience, and they know that. Um, so yeah, it, it, I think what happened was they said, we are really going to fully get behind it. We're going to put it in a place. That's awesome. Uh, we're going to get behind your vision of what's going on. And, uh, you know, all jokes aside, it's a big part of it. I think kids want to play in a place where it, it feels relevant and they feel like it matters. And, uh, that's been a big part of certainly the pitch. Uh, and hopefully it's a big part of it. And, you know, do I want to recruit kids who only care about where we play and how cool the uniform looks? Probably not but I do want them to know that we're going to supply them with everything we possibly can to have success. And uh, the facility is a big part of that. Thank you. Dylan Wallace. 
Hey, Coach, when you kind of mentioned the, the monster that the Big Ten brings, I know a lot of that kind of has to do with the size across the, the landscape of the teams. You know, when I look at this recruiting class, I notice, you know, Layla Blackwell's 6'4", Savannah's 6'3", Hillers is 6'3". I mean, you know, was there a point of emphasis to kind of go after players, you know, middle blockers that could really, you know, improve your guys' length um, to compete with sort of the, the Big Ten? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, when you guys saw – some of the Big Ten teams come into the stadium. You look at them and you say, "Okay, well, that kid's six seven, and that kid's six five, and obviously, size and athleticism really matter. Um, that's important. We needed a core of that. We graduated a lot of physical kids that are moving on, um, so that certainly is an important part of it. Um, but with that, I also think it's about player development. I mean, that's a really big part of what we're trying to do because the conference just is so deep, and there's so many good players, um, and that's what we were excited about. Someone like Brianna Edwards, who you know, got an invite to go train with the national team as one of the top 20 or so college kids in the country. She, she came in a couple of years ago as a long lean kid and she was happy and cute and fun. And, and now she's turning into a, a bit of a problem for the conference. So that's, that's what we hope. We hope these kids come in, they develop, they do things the right way. And, um, you know, we've got such a great staff around us, Chris, our strength coach and Amanda, the trainer and uh, the people who get them to, uh, you know, we've got nutritionists and people who get them, get them right. Uh, and so that's the, that's the goal. They've got good engines. Now they just got to put in the work. Thanks, Dylan. Connor Hines. Hey coach. Thanks for doing this. Cheers, Paul. Um, you know, you set records your last couple of years at Maryland in terms of recruiting classes there. Uh, you come to Indiana, you're quick to talk about the ecosystem and you know, the fact that this takes a village to bring you guys the success you want uh, in, in, in that, you know, using that lens, what, what, what makes Indiana different through these first couple of years for you? I just think, you know, I, it really is about people. Um, and, you know, I'm a little crazy to begin with. I do stuff that most people don't really want to do. I think it doesn't make a lot of sense. It'd be a lot easier to inherit a Final Four program and just kind of roll. Um, but, you know, you know there's going to be some heavy lifting and some long nights, and um, you've got to have the stomach for it. I told, I told you guys a couple of years ago, there's going to be some pain in the process. It's just what it is. Um, but the IU ecosystem, starting with Fred, all our support staff, um, everyone has done exactly what they said they were going to do. You know, guys like Jeremy Gray, who oversee the media stuff, um, you know, uh, even people on campus like Galen and people like everyone has just been so supportive. Um, and I think that's really what, as a coach, it's what frees you up to do what you do. Um, you get a lot of support from people. Uh, they say, what do you need? How do I help you? Um, and that's been the secret sauce. So my staff has certainly um, worked really hard. I think the players have worked really hard. It's, there's a lot of credit owed to the kids who played here over the last two years. You know, in this day and age, kids can leave and they can move on and they can do stuff. And um, a lot of those kids stuck it out. And we had some nice things happen. And, but their ability to sell where this was headed uh, was a big deal. And I think the kids who came here came because they uh, they believe in everyone at IU, not just me. Thank you. Dave first. Hi, Coach. Curious, uh, when you came up to Indy, uh, what were the sweatshirts the kids were wearing? <laughs> yeah, not IU. Let's leave it there. Uh, <laughs> no, and it's funny because I had recruited, when I was at Penn State, we recruited these clubs heavily. Uh, when I took the job in Maryland, we knew that these kids in the Midwest, you know, within three hours of campus is some of the best volleyball in the country. And I get asked that a lot. Um, you know, what regions do you recruit? What's the hot spots? What's, you know, Indiana has so many great high school coaches, so many great club coaches, so much history in the game. Um, you know, yeah, and that, it, it hit me when I got up there. I said, okay, where, where the heck is the IU stuff? Um, and now, you know, it's different when you go to club tournaments, when you go into these big clubs, I think kids are excited about it. We, you know, pre pandemic had a lot of kids come through camp, come to campus, come to matches. Um, we just wanted them to know it's a viable option for them to continue to right. play. I, I got a follow up if I can. Um, just, you know, this pandemic era, and certainly there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to what the fall may look like. How do you keep kids heading in the right direction or keep the optimism or just the, the right attitude, not knowing what's going to happen. Yeah. I think number one, recruit great people. I mean, these kids, I can't, Dave, they are so positive. They're working so hard. They did so well in school. Um, you know, we have this mantra kind of anyone, anytime, anywhere. 
And I told them, listen, if they tell us in a week, we're playing in a parking lot at 10 PM, it's game on, you know, don't get to the point where uh, you're not fit and ready to go. I think there's gotta be accountability across the board for kids at this level, where if we're only given a few weeks to fire back up that they're ready to go. Um, and I have a hundred percent confidence in our group that they're doing that. They, they keep in touch on zoom. Um, they're doing workouts together. Uh, they're playing game nights together. Um, we're trying to get them, uh, you know, much like football, uh, show them the playbook and kind of how we want to do stuff when they get here. Um, trying to teach them about kind of the pillars of what our program's about um, and do it to the point where they're excited to hear from us and not like God coaches all over me again. I think that's a, that's an important part of it, but it makes it easy when you really like your team. You know, I know that sounds funny, but this is a group. I'm more excited to coach this group than I have been any group I've had. And part of that is because uh, I'm excited about how talented they are. But, you know, they come from great families. They're really hardworking kids, and they're doing a great job of keeping positive and all this. We're, the coach speak stuff is we're trying to win the day, right? Like wake up, have a great day, rinse and repeat. Um, and they're being, you know, they're keeping me energized. They're, uh, they're just really special kids. I'm excited for everyone to get to know them. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Cheers. Uh, Jared Kelly. Hey, Coach. How are you? Good, man. What's popping? Um, I know this is still fairly fresh, and, uh, you know, you, you still have a lot. Uh, you're always looking to, towards the future. But uh, I'm just curious if, you know, you, you and your staff have time to ever kind of take a moment to celebrate these kind of uh, achievements or if you're always kind of just, you know, looking for the next step and uh, – uh, you know, looking ahead? Uh, we do a pretty good job of celebrating a lot. Uh, the staff is pretty fun. We, uh, we enjoy each other's company. Uh, you know, I'm a very much, uh, I want to try to enjoy today. Nothing's promised. So I can promise you that after getting a couple good phone calls, we have a pretty good time for a number of hours. And then we wake up the next day, sometimes a little foggy and we get back after it and uh, right back on the road, right back on the calls. And I think that's the nature of college coaching. You know, you, you take a minute to, to be proud. I'm more proud of the people around us. Um, you know, uh, it's like asking coaches if they love winning more than they hate losing and you know, all that stuff. It's, we're lucky to get to do what we do. Um, I have fun every day. So that's maybe why I have a good time every day. It's part of the thing I, I just believe in. I want to have a, I want to be the party, man. Wherever I go, I want to be the party. Thanks. Um, Nathan Krishnan. Yeah. Hey coach. Uh, hey, man. Looking, looking at the big picture, uh, assuming volleyball does come back as well as the other sports after the pandemic, how do you think COVID-19 has, has impacted recruiting and in college sports in general do you think it'll make any difference as far as doing things more virtually or or will it be back to business as how it was once things reopen yeah I think that's a great question I've been I've been in communication with our staff and administration I think it's going to change for a while um, I think the best departments are going to be way ahead of stuff um, you know you're going to win the zoom game you're going to find ways to interact and have content and get content out to people um, I think telling your story is really important. Um, and I think the days of us going into a facility where there's 40,000 players and, uh, you know, 140 courts might, might be different, um, especially for, for quite some time. So I think, you know, you've got to adapt. I think taxis were great and there comes Uber and Blockbuster was a pretty big deal and Netflix is doing okay. So I think you got to adapt. You got to keep moving, uh, be nimble. Um, you know, and the business of college athletics is going to change. We got to keep changing with it. Thanks. Um, I think we've uh, we've gotten to everybody. Does anybody uh, anybody have another question that they want to ask Steve? Yeah, I, uh, I had something quick as you touched on the business of college athletics. Uh, name, image, and likeness uh, looks like it's moving forward, Steve. Uh, and I read where Sonny Vaccaro mentioned that uh, it could be a real game changer for women's athletics. I'm just curious about your thoughts about the potential impact for volleyball and other sports. Yeah, it'll matter and it'll be a strategy. Um, you know, I think some of the programs in the country that have uh, big followings, big crowds, lots of community support, um, I think it'll matter. I don't know what the framework from the NCAA is going to be, uh, but I know that if you're an athletic department now, you better be aggressively thinking about how you're going to position yourself. Um, I think players that want to play at IU, uh, if they know anything about me and how I'm wired, uh, they're going to know we're going to go uh, as far as we could possibly go. 
uh, in that realm. And I think that's exciting. We've been joking about, uh, we've been joking with kids on our roster about throwing them on billboards and doing shows and having their own cereal. I mean, we'll be, we'll be, uh, we'll be at the front end of that, uh, across the country just cause I, I have a real interest in it. I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I was out of the game for four years. I was in the world of business and, um, it's exciting to me. I think it's something that's fun. So, uh, we'll be aggressive. I'll be all over it. And hopefully players at IU, uh, you know, will have their own line of blank. We'll figure it out when, uh, whatever their passion is that they can, they can promote and sell and, and do it with conviction. Connor, you had another question. Yeah, just to your earlier point about you being, you know, more excited than ever to coach this group. It's been no secret that, you know, you, you haven't hid from the fact that th these first couple of years have been, you know, you arriving, you building, you setting a foundation. Uh, what, what makes this year different? And, you know, does, does, the, uh, does the perspective change much? It, you know, it should. I think every year we should be, um, we should be able to beat the team the year before. And that's always been my goal. Um, the hard part about this, Connor, is that with the pandemic, this is not a good year to have an inexperienced team. You know, we don't have a lot of access to them. We're not going to see them a lot. We might only have a couple weeks to get going. This would be a great year to have a veteran team where they know what's going on. They walk back into the gym and you're right back in system to what you're doing. So, um, you know, that's a disadvantage. I think the advantage is these kids are really good players. Um, and they're going to be able to figure stuff out. I mean, they know, they know what they're getting into with me. They know what they're getting into with the conference. Uh, but it's different. You know, playing in front of 8,000 people on ESPN is different than thinking about playing on, uh, on TV. So we'll see. I think, um, I, think I know that we're going we're gonna to be in the process here of stacking some pretty awesome classes back to back to back over the next few years. Um, we're going to be recruiting some really impressive kids. And then once we get to the point, where we have depth at each position. And all of you guys know this because this is your world, but it's one thing in football to have 22 good guys. It's when you're playing teams that have the twos and threes or four stars and five stars. And if there's an injury, life goes on. You can bring in someone and they, they can roll. Um, often when you're building, you have a really good player or a couple of good players. And if they get hurt, you're in real trouble. So we just got to get to the point where we have depth uh, at every position and the ability to withstand some of that stuff over the course of the season. Matt, you had another question. Yeah, Coach. In the release that we got, one of the things that really stood out was the jump in attendance since you've come in, um, you know, from 17 before you came in the last couple of years. How big is that not only for your current team and you and your staff to have that support, but when you um, go out and recruit and you can show recruits that there's, you know, the students and people are getting behind the program? Yeah, Matt, you nailed it. So when you bring a recruit to campus and the place is full and it's fun and there's big energy, the student section's having a good time. The music is live. Everyone's having a good time. Uh, it's a lot easier to sell than a dead gym when you're not having success. That was a stated goal. Um, I'm really, I'm really uh, fired up about the recruiting class, but to be able to be 15th in the country in attendance, I think is a massive step forward. Um, you know, some of the guys on the call will know, I, I really care. I mean, I care about the experience. I care about where people park and how concessions are and where they can sit and what the promotions are. Um, I think all of that in this day and age really matters. I think you got to cater to families. You got to cater. The only people who really uh, don't love my current event is the older community because it's loud. Um, and I apologize all the time and I say it's my bad, but if we're catering to a group that's, um, you know, if, you're, if your kid is screaming or the students are going crazy, that's about on brand for where I'm trying to take this thing. So I think it should be loud and energetic and the music should be relevant to what people want to hear. Um, and I've been straightforward about the student section being my, one of my top priorities. I want them to have a blast every night. Um, we don't, you know, basketball has six, 7,000 people, the student section, and we might need 500 to a thousand to make it completely wild. And so that's the goal. And hopefully, uh, on the backside of the pandemic, we can keep the, uh, keep things going as long as it's safe and, and we can keep that rolling. Any other questions for Steve? I think we're good. Steve, anything else you want to close with? No, I appreciate you guys. I hope everyone's staying safe. Um, we're really excited about everything that's going on, and uh, we're going to get back to work. That's what we do. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Take that. care. And, uh, Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Jeremy. I'll send out the recording. Thank you.